We're excited about this webinar, Promoting Library Card Sign-Up Month from Inside and Outside the Library. I'm Kathy Lucier, the Engagement Coordinator for Library Aware. It's a product of Novelist. I hope you're ready for a webinar jam-packed with practical tips to help you make this year's Library Card Sign-Up Month efforts your most successful yet. There's a wide variety of libraries out there, so clearly one approach won't work for all. So today, you'll hear about many different approaches. Our goal today is to offer you some inspiration and some tools for creating a library card sign-up campaign that's just right for your community. Today's webinar is presented in partnership with our friends at Every Library a nonpartisan, nonprofit social welfare organization chartered to work on local library ballot initiatives. So speaking of our panelists, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about them. John Kraska is a founder and executive director of Every Library, the first super PAC for libraries, and the Every Library Institute, a nonprofit research and training organization focused on the future of library funding. He's a former board president of the Berwyn, Illinois Public Library and RAILS, the Reaching Across Illinois Libraries system. He'll share every library's learnings from library campaigns and voter engagement, and you're going to really learn a lot from him. Pam Jascott most recently served as marketing and communications consultant for the State Library in North Carolina where she created and implemented an award-winning library campaign. She'll give you some great ideas for your campaign, whether it's for one location or an entire state. And then there's me, Kathy Lucier. I'll moderate our panel, and at the end of this webinar, I'll show you some ways to promote your library card in September and all year round. So Pam, I'd like to start off with you. You coordinated statewide library card campaigns for North Carolina. So how did that one campaign work for all the libraries in the state, different sizes, services, and communities? Tell us about that. I'd be happy to, Kathy. Well, the way we set it up, um, because we have such diverse communities in North Carolina, we decided to make it like a shopping spree, and we encourage people to shop. So library staff used our plan which included marketing strategies, event ideas, promotional materials, and also some key messages. But what they did is they customized it to fit their own communities. They were able to pick and choose whatever suited their library the best. And we encouraged them, though, to really think about a target audience. Who did they really want to reach in their communities? Because we know all the communities are different. You know, for example, like if they wanted to reach out to teens or stay-at-home moms or seniors, each library might have a different audience that they wanted to reach. And we really stress the fact that it's much easier to target your message when you know who you're trying to reach. Pam, I really think target audiences are key. I agree with you so much. So for people that might be new to all that, once a library chooses a target audience, how do you make sure that you're grabbing their attention? Um, Kathy, there are several ways. What worked well for us was to really partner with someone um, that was well known to the audience. And, you know, we worked at a state level, so it might have been a little bit different. But we really worked to get an endorsement that would make a difference for our campaign. And so the state library, we had various spokespersons over a five-year period. And they included uh, Eric Stahl, who was a hockey player for the Hurricanes, Andy McDowell, who was an actress, and even the governor. Um, in 2011, we really wanted to focus on the teen population for our annual card campaign. Because as we all know, that those teens can be reluctant readers you know, sometimes it's really hard to get them engaged. It can be a real challenge. So what we did in 2011 is we asked the rock star Bo Foy, and you'll see his picture up here, and he's from the indie band Ariel Down. And he um, agreed to serve as our spokesperson. 
So as you'll see, we made a really cool video with Bo in one of now, our libraries. Yes. Now, Pam, I'm going to interrupt you because, and you don't know I'm going to say this, but that's you over there on the right next to Bo, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Yes, trying to figure <laughs> out how, how to make this video really cool. So, But we use the video to um, as a great hook for our marketing, and um, we found new partners with it. We were able to get some great media attention, and the campaign really was able to last a long time. Most of all, though, Kathy, we saw huge increases in our library card registration and some really great collaborative efforts between our school libraries and our public libraries. And this was a first for us. Um, those partnerships are really important because they really help us market our libraries. And remember, if you want to have a spokesperson, think about who you want to reach and what that spokesperson, who they could relate to, what audience. So like example, if you're in a really small community, you might want to even just get like a local teacher or someone. So just think about your community and who would work for your community. You know, I love that advice. And we had someone who um, wrote in on chat and wanted to talk about targeting the millennial generation. And I real I know you're, you know, in talking about the video, um, you know, this was a couple of years ago. Maybe today that's targeting them on um, Instagram. I know that's really popular with teens right now. Um, mm -hmm. Later I'm going to be showing some ways that we can use social to reach people. Um, you know, I think that coming up with ways to reach you know, whoever your target audience might be. And I think it might be more of a challenge maybe um, with millennials, but I know that you did a lot with the teens with Bo. So talk about that because that might give us some tips that um, this person and then also um, some other people talked about. And we do have a question about the partnership between school libraries and public libraries, which I'm excited to say because you're just about to talk about that. Fact, that's right, I, that's right. If I go ahead and uh, move the slide for you, you will see. There we go. You're talking about building partnerships. So cover it all, Pam. It's all up to you. No pressure. Okay. So, well, we were really lucky with Bo because he was so enthusiastic. I mean, he would walk in the room and the place would just light up. The kids and the teens just loved him, and he really enjoyed interacting with them. Um, I'm going to mention just a few examples of how successful Bo was as our spokesperson, just to give you some concrete things that we did. Um, one library wanted to increase their teen card registration, so they put all their energy and they focused on that target group. And what they ended up doing is they had a poetry rap contest. They invited Bo to attend. And Bo chatted with the kids, as you'll see here in the picture, and he even gave them some tips on how to wrap their poems. Having Bo there was a big draw. The kids were just so excited when he walked in the room. And many of those kids who participated had never even been in the library before. So it was very successful. Um, and you had mentioned, Kathy, about the public schools. Um, what we did with the public schools was we had um, the schools run the videos prior to our visit. And I must say, Bo was very gracious. He was willing to visit. We probably visited about 60 schools over the year. And so ahead of time, the school would run the video and encourage kids during daily announcements, you know, Bo's coming to visit, make sure you get your library card. So that worked out really well. And then we also had Bo speak at the public school's Librarian State Annual Conference, and he generated a lot of excitement here with the librarians and really encouraged them to take the campaign back to their school. I really like this. Now, when you got Bo to do this, and I hate to put you on the spot here, but did, did the North Carolina State Library pay him to do this? Do you normally pay spokespeople. Um, my library never had money to pay spokespeople, so, um, and you'll see some slides about that later on. Um, what was your experience on that front? Um, no, we never paid anyone. They, most of them did that out of the goodness of their heart. 
Um, <laughs> nice. And we were very lucky on that. Bo, Bo was one that did over the top. I mean, he, like I said, we visited hundreds, not hundreds, but about 60 schools. We traveled wow. all over the state. Um, some of our other spokespersons didn't do as much personal visits, but they recorded things for us and did PSAs and um, things like that. So it varies depending on the spokesperson that you get. Yep, I like that. Now, since most libraries might not have a rock star to back their campaign, and it might be a very local campaign, maybe one library, maybe a dozen, how do you recommend they get started? Well, I always feel it's really good to start with your staff. Um, you want to get them involved and engaged. You know, ask for volunteers or the staff to help with the campaign. Ask them who they think maybe should be the target audience. To me, it was always amazing, and maybe it shouldn't be, but how much information the front desk people have. You know, they're waiting on customers every day. They get to know folks. So talk with them. Um, brainstorm ideas on how to reach different audiences, and also ask the staff if they'd be willing to share their stories. So there's a lot of different ways, but really try to get that staff involved. That's an interesting idea. Was it hard to get them to participate, though? Not really. Um, most of the staff were really excited to be asked. It kind of made them feel like they belonged to a larger cause for the library. Um, you know, many people on the circulation staff really like just having a change of job duties. Um, we found several who were great at providing tips on, you know, actual different groups to talk to, neighborhoods that we should target. Um, one library even had their staff wear buttons, you know, library card sign-up buttons, so that it often sparked, you know, conversation maybe at the reference desk or, you know, other service points throughout the library. And I really like this. One library got their pages involved, where as the pages were out in the shelf shelving books, they actually engaged the customers. And they said, hey, I see you've got a card, but have you thought about bringing a friend to the library and encouraging them to get a card? So that was one thing that libraries did. And, you know, Kathy, you can always create a little competition. Um, see who signs up in your staff for the most library card holders and new holders. You know, maybe offer the winner some lunch with the director or gift cards or whatever motivates them. It really doesn't take much. Um, <laughs> and also, don't forget your volunteers who work at the library. You know, you want to get them involved. Uh, board members are often influential in the community, and they could be great spokespersons or, you know, talking about the library campaign. It's, you know, it's really surprising, Kathy. How many people are willing to help? You just need to ask them. Yeah, I really think you're right. Mm -hmm. um, one idea, another idea that worked really well in our libraries was to have other people tell the story of how important a library card is. It's, you know, it's that power of third, third, par third party endorsement, you know, focusing on real people in the community. So, like, example, if you're targeting moms or parents, you know, have a mom tell how important it is bringing her children to the library. You know, she could do a quick chat with parents or caregivers um, at story time. She could do a podcast or have her speak at community groups. Um, one library, I thought this was a great idea. They had the county commissioners work at the circulation desk signing people up for library cards. They spent a few hours at the desk, and it was just a great way to get some publicity. You know, the newspapers love that. And it also was a really good way to generate some interest. And I think it was also another great way to educate the commissioners what was happening in the library, because they were actually there seeing what was going on. And last of all, you know, don't forget the kids. Kids are great, too. Um, we had one homeschooler who was a very active library user. And he shared his story talking about how important it was for him to have use of all the resources in the library. You know, the library was his school. So, you know, all these stories, they can be recorded, you can stream them. Um, they can also work well as a teaser for getting media coverage. And, you know, last of all, we just want to remember word of mouth marketing. 
And as George Silverman says in The Secrets of Word of Mouth Marketing, getting people to talk often, favorably, to the right people in the right way about your product is far and away the most important thing that you can do. So, Kathy, in addition to the word of mouth marketing and spokesperson, you know, you also want to think about speaking engagements, special events maybe that are held in your community, um, community festivals. There's a lot of different options. And, um, Kathy, I know you'll be sharing later on some great promotional materials available in Library Aware, too. Oh, absolutely, Pam, and um, we will be providing these slides for everyone as well, cause, which is good because or, or the recording of this, because I know there are a lot of great ideas here. And I want to get John in on this um, because he's got a lot of great ideas, and he's going to be addressing something that popped up in the comments, um, people chuckling a little bit about trying to get their pages um, to get out there and, you know, do something. So um, he's going to cover a little of some of those concerns. So, John, tell us Kathy, what we can do to get outside the library. Sorry. Sure. Yeah, so every library is set up as a political action committee for libraries, folks. We're, we work on local library ballot initiatives, so referendums and millages and mill levies and parcel taxes and warrant articles, all the different things that about 40% of public libraries have to do to talk to the voters in order to improve their funding picture. Uh, we also work on negotiations with city councils and county governments and town boards. We're uniquely focused on just the funding day election day, that, that one weird day of the year when uh, we don't want to see the librarians turn into the tax man. We want to see the librarians be supported with the funding they need to do their jobs best. Uh, we work in politics for libraries, and that work that we do on politics has led us to understand that even in non-political situations, it's very important to us to, to use some of the tools and techniques that activate people activate voters, activate constituents of your elected officials, some of those tools and techniques that are used um, to good effect in politics. And, and I know it's a pretty divisive time right now, but to good effect means how can we come together and work on an issue that's affecting our community? How can we come together and get behind a person or, or an idea that we believe will make some change happen? Here at Every Library, we use the metaphor, Kathy, of the librarian as candidate. The idea that people look to you as the, the, the folks who are going to spend the money, their tax money. So we need to get to know those people who are the librarians. And when I say librarian, I don't mean just folks with an MLS. I mean everybody in the building, from the page to the clerk to the volunteers even sometimes, uh, front of house, back of house. Um, and one of the things that we always want to do with a candidate is to make sure that they're prepared before they go out in front of the voters, before they go on that stump speech. So. What we have is an approach with door-to-door uh, -door library card signups and event-based signups that's intended to, well, expose us in a new way, us meaning the folks who work at the library, in a new way to the people who may want to use it but should be supporting it. And it here is, is the library, sure, but it here is also the value system that you're trying to produce in the, or to enact in the community, the mission that you have as the library, and the, uh, the vision that you have for helping all ages and stages. When I say going door to door as the most innovative way, the most politically active, the most emotionally uh, um, engaging way to talk about library card signups, I want you, if you don't have a door to door environment in, in, in your community, if, it, if it's sprawling, if it's not the right kind of environment to go knock on somebody's door, I hear that. I also want to talk about special events. I want to talk about places that are unusual that folks are not necessarily going to be, well, expecting to see their librarians at. Uh, we've got some very practical tips um, on how to get this going. And there is a reason for doing it. One of the key drivers for why people support funding for the library and therefore funding for the library staff, well, it's interesting to say in a seminar here about library card signups, is that the user status of the person who's a supporter doesn't matter, but we know that to be very true. We know it to be true from the OCLC, From Awareness to Funding Study, and it's borne out by the fact that there's a lot of uh, people who are willing to donate, to volunteer, to endorse the library, to talk about how, how great what the librarians do is in the world, who aren't necessarily gonna show up. 
and yet one of our big driving goals is to be seen by those people, uh, to be seen perhaps as a, um, well, offering them an opportunity to become part of something bigger than themselves, which is the library. We also know very clearly from the data that the library is not perceived as just a provider of things that are practical, that committed supporters have a belief system and, and, and the belief system is an interesting word to use because it's kind of irrational, especially for non-users. If they haven't been into the library since they were 14 years old, they have no idea what you're up to. And yet they believe that what the librarians are doing, regardless of job title, that what the librarians are doing is having an impact in the world. And it, for the non-users especially, it's an impact on, well, somebody other than them because they haven't been a user for a long time. Uh, they have a lot of compassion in their heart for their neighbors and for their neighborhood. But going door to door or putting the librarians in a special place, a unique place, an unusual place for Library Card Setups Month, what it does is it reminds those non-users, first and foremost, of the powerful transformational work and the level of engagement that you have with the community. The secondary benefit, quite frankly, is that they might pick up a library card from you. It's important for us to take a look at the fact that people are willing to fund the library, either as, as voters directly or as constituents of your elected officials, because of their perceptions and attitudes. And I got to say this, if their perceptions and attitudes are formed by driving by, seeing the parking lot is full, and thinking everything is fine, when you actually have budgetary challenges and you have a great deal of hope for how you could serve your community, the best way to, well, improve their perceptions and uh, update their attitudes is by meeting them in a personal way. It's the perceptions and attitudes about the institution of the library and the people who work there co-equally. I want to emphasize that for a moment because we tend to use the word library all the time in our advocacy work, but we tend not to say librarians or staff. And yet, people are willing to fund the library based on their perceptions and attitudes of the institution and the people who work there. And if all it is is a drive-by relationship, well, how do we break through that and get to folks who, sh who probably do care, who should care a little bit more, who may actually want to use the place? I'd suggest that the best way to do it is this door-to-door, -door, in person, event-based, and special location-based approach. Okay, the John. Last part you're gonna yeah. you're gonna be scared you're gonna scare people with that so yeah. I just no, want I, people I, I to know to. yeah <laughs> John is gonna give you some tips on that um, so um, start getting ready for those tips um, oh, I think yeah, it's yeah, really gonna be very, helpful to people it, yeah it's very practical and it's absolutely terrifying yeah. Kathy I'm saying that <laughs> in the most loving way possible because it's actually yep. in the data since 2008 yeah. we, we've known based on the OCLC from where is the funding survey that the image of the passionate librarian as a true advocate for lifelong learning is a key driver for people being willing to support the library as a donor, as a voter, as a funder, as a uh, volunteer, as a networker, and yet we tend to hide behind the reference desk. I'm looking to have people jump over the reference desk and CERC desk and find new ways to interface with the public in order to, well, to be seen, not necessarily as a servant, but as a proxy for their compassion. To be able to say to somebody, do you need this library card? And they say, do you know? And the next question that you have for them is, do you need this library? Do you, is there somebody in your family who does? And they say, no, but maybe. And then you say, is there somebody in your block or in your neighborhood that you know who needs access to this most basic form of enfranchisement for education, for lifelong learning, for connections to the community, for their own economic well-being? And they will say, yes, I think I do. And thank you for taking care of those people by bringing the library to them. All right, practical stuff around, around politics too, Kathy, is that it all comes down to the fact that in politics, the, aside from really big, well-funded campaigns, one of the key driver for people voting for other people or people responding to ideas is that they've had some experience of that person who's running for office. And in the librarian is candidate metaphor, that's really important or they've had some sort of experience of the issue that somebody, like you know, you don't get the knock on the door and a guy from Greenpeace says to you, get in the dinghy with me, we're going to go out to the North Sea together. The knock on the door from the guy from Greenpeace says, I love whales, do you love whales? If you love whales, I, here's how I take care of whales. If you like that, please give me a check. We have a, a but somebody's got to get in front of you 
to talk about your shared value system about the whales, about seals, about lifelong literacy, about helping kids read at grade level. So practically speaking, Kathy, practically speaking, walking door to door or special events or unusual places is intended to do two things. One is to pull folks out who work at the library, who, as Pam said, are the best representatives of the library, to put them into a context that is unusual, to have that sort of unexpected and un, well, let me, let me make sure that's not unwelcome. So I've got some tips for you here. We've got a quick start guide that you can download um, off of the website. I'm expecting Molly to pop, pop the, uh, the, the URL uh, into the chat for us in a moment. But a quick start guide to help you think through, well, where can we do it? If it's not a door-to-door -door kind of town, what are our unusual places? And why are we going to go to those places? And how do we make sure that our team is safe on a Tuesday night, a Thursday night, and a Saturday? We're not looking for you to suddenly leave the building empty for a month. This is a short-term, high-impact opportunity. The approach could be for your neighborhood door-to-door. -door. And there are particular places, I'll get to that in a second, that might be more valuable than others. But there's special events and unusual places, even if you can't do the door-to-door -door walking. The, the image on the bottom uh, right here, as I'm looking at the screen, is from our colleagues at the Kitsap Regional Library uh, across the water from Seattle. And across the water is important because they did library card sign up on the ferry. There's a couple ferries every day that go from Bremerton and Bainbridge to Seattle, and it's a captive audience for 43 beautiful minutes. And to have the library card signups happen in that context, our colleagues in New Orleans keep threatening to do uh, library card sign up on the streetcar named Desire. And in <laughs> Chicago, my, my hometown, we could do it on the L. There are places like, even the smallest places, the Casey's General Store and the gas station. To do library card sign up month at the gas pump, uh, to some place that is very rural and very remote, there are two or three places that might have, well, a waiting room or a place to gather besides the library, and it might be a bar stool or a restaurant. Um, there are opportunities even, and I, we're working on this one right now with a library in Michigan, to do a ride along with the pizza delivery guy. The contact is very important. You may or may not receive a completed application through that contact. What you've done is started a conversation with people about the value system the librarians have and that you're trying to put to work as a mission-driven organization in the community. And the people who do that ride along or stand at the gas station or on the ferry or walking door to door are the best representatives, as Pam said, for what you're doing. All right, when you go out, or I'm sorry, before you go out, I need you to think through, as part of the quick start, what your big thing is, because the big thing is not you need a library card person I'm talking to. It is that you have instituted recently, and recently could be as far back as two or three years, recently instituted something, well, the reason it's two or three years, Kathy, is because these people haven't been to the library, they're not library card users, you know? So yeah. what's the big thing that they've got, you've got going on at your library that you want to share in the community? And as Pam said, there's many different audiences that you could be talking to. So what's the big thing that you want to carry? And then ask if people need the library card. There are different places to go. This was Cedar Rapids Public Library in Iowa. We worked with them in the lead up to their campaign on door-to-door -door library card sign month. And there's a couple of different reasons to go places. Sometimes it's because a neighborhood has, well, diminished or, or, or difficult access to the library. Great. Let's go there. Another reason to go to a neighborhood, and this could be for event-based or for, for special locations too, is that they haven't noticed you, especially in places where there's new uh, housing builds going on. A lot of new folks, a lot of turnover in the community. Well, let's go knock on the doors of our new neighbors. And the other reason to go to a particular place might be for the leverage that you get, because you might want to go to that neighborhood because of the donor base or a political base or a demographic base that you need to meet. Um, all of these are legitimate reasons. They might not be concurrent with each other in any given year. And at the same time, going out and talking to them where they live is the greatest opportunity to, uh, to, to jump over that reference desk and to get around that CERC, CERC, CERC desk. We've got some tips for you to download also about how to prepare your data. Uh, it, a lot of it has to do with mapping who is in your ILS and who isn't in your, your, your cardholder data based on the um, information that's available from the Postal Service 
and or from a service like A to Z databases or Reference USA about addresses. And the beautiful thing about the data is that you can save time by skipping houses that are already card holders. Now, Kathy's going to talk to us for a few minutes, a few, in a few minutes, about the flyers and the outreach materials. That's the, 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 the beauty of the Library Aware suite, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. So, and I'm not the expert, Kathy. You don't want me doing anything. I, I'm like a kid with a crayon, okay? <laughs> okay, good. But what, what we're good at over here is the script. And the interesting thing about the script is that you need to be able to help your staff, those shy pages, through the first two or three or five conversations that they're going to have. Um, and after they get a chance to be on their feet with a script that talks about, well, who they are, why they're coming, what's the big idea, what's the big thing that they're trying to share, uh, to help, think, help them think through the potential questions that people have at their, de at their front door or at that special event like a farmer's market or a place like a laundromat, Giving them the tools with a script allows them to, to, well, after the third, fourth, or fifth time they do it, they're going to own it. They're going to embody it. They're going to be off script, but in a really loving way. And if you're going to leave the building, I'm not going to let you leave the building, even for the laundromat or even for the farmer's market, without some way to make sure that your, your, your team is safe and that your team is doing things smartly. The, um, the, the safety plan that we have um, in the download is pretty detailed, um, and I'd, I'd like you to please take some time thinking about, well, if we're going to go door to door in this neighborhood, how do we do it in pairs? Does everybody have a cell phone? Are they carrying bottled water? What's the protocol if anything happens? And it's not to dial the main desk at the library. It's to talk through this with public safety in mind. Yes. Once we're safe, once we're scripted, once we're ready to go with our materials, once we know where we're going to go, as Pam said before, it's all about PR. The door-to-door -door or location-based special event library card signups is a powerful way to talk to even the noisiest media market, even the biggest media market. If you have the, door, if you have the, uh, the ferry kind of opportunity, if you have the streetcar or the L kind of opportunity, if you have several laundromats and mobile home parks, et cetera, the visuals that come out of that are really extraordinary. And to plan to do pre-event, day of, and post-event, well, pre-event and day of is a, lot of, is a lot of hype. Post-event marketing is why do we go out? Why do we take the time? Why do we care so much? And the why do we care so much also helps bring people around to what the library is up to. We've got a very detailed timeline for you to download. It, goes, uh, it starts in May, and it takes you through September 1st with the intent of having you on your feet and out the door maybe two or three nights and maybe one or two weekend days. Uh, there's some and really John, good I know we're, we're going to Go also have that, yeah, we're going to also have that timeline um, if people want to look on the Novelist website. Um, mm -hmm. They'll also, if they're watching the recording, they're going to be able to get that on our website as well. Thank you. Last bit of this, Kathy, real quick, is around feedback and uh, the reporting side of it. One fascinating aspect of this is that the, well, the number of conversations is what really drives it. And these are real stats from our, our friends in Cedar Rapids Public Library. This was two nights. It was a Tuesday and a Thursday. They knocked on 180 doors and had 106 conversations. They only made 36 new cards, but the leave-behinds, and Kathy's going to get into the, into the, the look and feel of that and what, what messaging to share. Uh, but the leave behinds part of it is the first of a long series of conversations with people who otherwise are just driving by, seeing the parking lots full, and thinking everything's fine. All right, a couple of pro tips for you. Smart, friendly, comfortable, official, prepared, and safe. All right? Use data to drive what you're doing. Skip the buildings and the places you don't need to go. Look at the data about where people live and where the cardholders are in order to determine where you should spend your time. The comfort of your staff and your volunteers is paramount, and that includes being safe and being prepared. And you finally have, folks, one of the best uses of the tote bag ever. To bring the library tote bag full of all the fantastic materials that Kathy's going to take you through so that you'll look like you're from the library, it's a, it's, well, it's the best cross-marketing opportunity for a tote bag ever. <laughs> I love that, John. Thanks. My pleasure. Um, thank you. Yeah, these were such great tips, really. Um, and I encourage people 
um, to watch this over and over again. Um, really jot down these notes. Um, lots of great information here from an expert. So really great ideas. Thanks, John. I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can do to spread that word now that you have all these great ideas. So let's talk about some marketing materials. Um, and we do have a question about targeting businesses, and I'm going to actually touch on that. So um, see if that answers your question. So we invite you to stay for this part, even if you don't have Library Aware. I'm going to show you the samples we created in Library Aware. Um, but I really think you're going to get some good inspiration and tips to use at your library. So good communicators know that multi-channel promotions have the biggest impact. You all know the rule to ensuring someone hears your message. Repeat, repeat, repeat. With so many communication channels today, people need to hear and see your message in different places. You have to get your message out everywhere your target audience gathers. Now that might be in person, but it also might be online. Well, that's why we created these templates for library where customers. We created an entire campaign of coordinating materials, and we gave people some options for whatever audience, as Pam talked about, that they're trying to reach, and as John mentioned, in whatever way you're trying to reach them, maybe in person, maybe online. We've got web graphics, social media posts, flyers, signs, rack cards, and emails. They all have a consistent look and message. These templates are all customizable, so you can include your own library card image and your own branding. John mentioned door hangers. So when you head outside the library, take the door hangers with you. As John mentioned, they're a great way to share your message when someone's not home. I suggest getting these printed on sturdy cardstock unless the printer in your library can handle sturdy cardstock. You may have to get another printer to do these, but you, know, you don't want a real thin piece of paper on these. Our templates are already formatted with cut lines, and library where customers will find these under bookmarks, two per page. So as Pam and John both said, you want to remember to focus on your target audiences. Are there groups of people who use your library for the same reason? So one great example for library cards is going to be parents or caregivers. They play a vital role in influencing how a child feels about books and reading. Now, it can get expensive to stock an in-home library and keep it updated as the child grows. So let your parents and caregivers know how a library card can help them raise a reader by checking out books for their home for free with a library card. I've seen libraries market this to daycare centers and even teachers who want to keep their bookshelves in their classrooms filled with new selections. And of course, you're going to want to encourage parents and caregivers to sign up children for their own card too. Now we had a question about businesses. Another great idea is to market to business owners and entrepreneurs. Your library has a ton of resources for them. Some libraries are marketing their location as a co-working space for people who work from home or have their own business who are entrepreneurs. Consider creating marketing materials for your chamber or maybe other business organizations for them to share with their members. Your library has a ton of great databases and reference materials for entrepreneurs, so there's lots of ways that you can attract their attention. Don't forget about the e-cards. So many more libraries have these now. Um, they're used to, useful for people that are your virtual customers. They want to do downloads and streaming services. They're great for people who just don't live near a bricks and mortar library, or they don't want anything that is going to have a fine or fee because they have to return the item. So promote your e-cards in eBlast and on social media. Those who would be interested in online services are comfortable being online, so they're already there. So that's why you're going to use eBlast, social, web graphics to reach them, and be sure to link your image to your online sign-up form when you send out that email. 
make it easy. John touched on this when he talked about library funding, and I went through this personally at my old library system. Our funding for years was on the chopping block by our city council. Our elected officials wanted to know the return on taxpayers' money, the return on investment. So in other words, were they, were they getting their money's worth for the budget that they gave us? Be sure to show your library's value in dollars and cents with a sign or a social post like this one on the left. Over on the right, you see the library value calculator. This is something that the American Library Association has on their website. It's free for anybody to use. And it's something that we link to on our website, and you can do that back at my old library, and you can do that as well to let your patrons do the math for their own use. When you can show your value in terms that people understand, like their wallet, or for elected officials in your library's return on their investment in you, you have a really powerful statement. So getting people to sign up for your library card might be the focus for September for library, library card sign up month, but it's really a year round effort. You want to keep your library visible to your community 24 seven. Don't wait until budget time. I went through that myself. You've got to be saying your message all year round. So here's some great examples of how to do that. Infographics like the one on the left um, and also the one on the right. The one on the left is one that we created as part of these materials. Um, they promote all the valuable things that you can do with your library card. People love that infographic look and it looks great on social media. It's also a great handout when your library director or manager is talking to whoever controls your budget, maybe at the city, the county, your province, um, to know very quickly the value of your library. Over on the right, our friends at Chatham-Kent Public Library in Ontario, they have actually taken one of our templates and made infographics that they post to their website as their annual report. So I think that's a really visual way to get your word out there and for people to be able to um, remember it and digest it really easily. So really think about ways that you can do that. These are just two great examples, but keep your information out there in front of people. I wanted to share just a few quick examples of what libraries are doing to keep their library card and their library's value top of mind. So remember when Pam talked about using an indie rock star that teens admired? Find your local celebrities, whether that's service members, TV news anchors, or a well-known DJ. This is what the Jacksonville Public Library did. As long as it's people your target audience can relate to and admire, it's going to work. You can also use your own website to share your customers' stories. That's what Houston Public Library does. Celebrities are great to feature, but don't forget to use stories from everyday people. That's what everyone can relate to. Houston Public Library makes it really easy with an online form on their website so that customers can submit a story and it gets consent from the customer for the library to use it. And so you're taking care of all of that at once. So this that you're looking at right now is a great feature about a local caterer and personal chef who did research to start her business at the library and she still uses the library today to look at recipes for inspiration and for business advice. I want you to specifically see that last sentence on here that I pulled out on this slide. The last sentence of the profile reads, the passion for cooking, talent, and creativity, those came from Faye Powers. But the confidence and insights she needed to turn them into a career, that came from the library. Now, that's a great story and that's an ad you really can't buy. So I'm hoping you got some good ideas and strategy tips for your library card sign-up month efforts. 
What do you want to know more about? So use the chat feature. Um, we're going to take what we can at this time, um, but let me see. I know that um, my other Kathy, my colleague at Novelist, is pulling up some questions. Um, Pam, how did you create that PSA? Can you talk a little bit more about um, how PSAs that you mentioned worked? I know you had the video, but you also mentioned PSAs. How can you talk? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, we were really lucky with the video because um, Bo's team actually did the video for us. They actually had professional videographers. But we also worked with the TV stations and local radio stations to do public service announcements. And, you know, we would write them and share them and get maybe a voiceover or get Bo to say something. But we also shared them with the libraries and gave them like a template to use. And then they put their own personal touches on them. So, you know, if they had someone that they had for a spokesperson and wanted to pop it into the PSA, they could do that. So it was just another way where we sort of gave them an outline and then they were able to personalize it, sort of how we did all the other types of marketing things. Um, oh, I like that's that. That's pretty much what we did with that, yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Hey, John, um, talk a little bit more about um, how to do signups away from your building if you don't have the tech capabilities to do so. So sure. maybe you, you know, you're off site, you, you don't have, you know, the Wi Fi to do it. Um, right. Anyway, talk well, a little bit about some, some uh, easy ways to do library card sign ups off site. Well, one of the first things you have to do is a, a quick policy review. If you have burdensome policies about identification, you might want to waive those policies because you're going to be at somebody's front door and you know where they live. You know, um, that said, the the clipboard and the the, the properly built form uh, that allows you to dovetail into a verification step, people are very understanding. You know, if you come to them and say, "I, I have this hot new product for you." Um, and uh, I would like you to sign up for it, and we're going to mail it to your house because I know where you live. Sure. Uh, as soon as we can go back and process it, we'll be very happy to do that for you. Um, we're talking about a couple of hundred conversations, or a couple of hundred conversations that lead to a couple of dozen cards, and it's the, the exposure that you're getting in the rest of the community to this highly compassionate engagement that's more important than a couple of dollars in postage. So, yeah, we see it all the time. Clipboard, nicely built form, give me two days to enter the, the information, let me make sure that they're valid, and then I'm going to mail them out a card. People are thrilled to get it. And I think, Kathy, you brought up a great point before about the digital or the e-cards. If you've got a way to, to do that immediately with a series of barcodes that are already pre-validated pre, uh, before you leave for your walking shift or your special event or location that day, so much the better. Oh, that's great. That's great. So we have a couple more questions for you. You're on the hot seat right now, um, but it shows the interest that people really had, so that's great. Um, so how do you narrow down your audience from all that demographic data, and what if you don't have the budget for all that demographic data? Sure. Well, you know your town better than I do, um, and so we can draw a, a, a polygon or a circle or a square around a particular neighborhood and limit the number of, um, of uh, uh, addresses that you have to consider. You know, if you have a big place or, or you need to make a small place out of a big place, uh, again, why do you want to go to a particular neighborhood? Um, why do you want to go to a particular special event or location that has the right kind of draw? Uh, if you go to the laundromat or the gas station or the farmer's market, it's, it's, you don't have to worry about data. You just have to pick a, pick a location or an event that makes sense for a good reason. But if you are gonna draw a circle, a square, or a polygon around a particular neighborhood, that limits the amount of work you can do, or you need to do. Uh, if you have to do it by hand, folks, the uh, inputting all of your uh, current card holders into Google Maps, okay, then lets you have a map of all your current card holders that you can then, then you can uh, just go through and skip those houses. So you kind of like essentially define the negative for yourself by showing what's positive in that space. And you can do that by downloading something from your ILS into an Excel spreadsheet and uploading it into yep. something as basic as Google Maps. Yep, I like that. So mm -hmm. is there a best time to do this outreach? You know, are certain days, right. dates, day of the week? 
you know, from, from what we understand from um, political campaign consultants that are out there, the, the best days, uh, the best times and days to go knock on somebody's door are Tuesdays and Thursdays, Saturday days, and Sunday afternoons. Uh, but wow. it really, yeah, but it really comes down to when you've got the volunteers and the staff capabilities. Again, this is uh, this first year, this first time that you do it, even the fifth or tenth time that you do it, it's more about being seen doing it than the raw numbers that you've acquired of new cards. It's the visibility of you being compassionately engaged with the community. So if it turns out that the reporter from the local newspaper or the TV you know, folks or the, 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 the camera crew or just the iPhone can only come with you at 3 in the afternoon on a Wednesday, make that happen, okay? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So um, I think this this question's for me, but um, mm -hmm. anyone else can jump in too. So they're asking about what's next for new card holders. Um, onboarding emails, reading suggestions, those are all great ideas. I can tell you that um, several libraries are sending those onboarding emails. So they're pulling a list on a regular basis from their ILS of new, new card signups and immediately sending them an email, you know, welcoming them to the library and pointing out those features at the library that they can start taking advantage of. Um, maybe it's letting them know about some of the databases that you have. Um, that they may not even know you have. So many people today still don't know that libraries have ebooks, they have downloadable music, um, so many things that people are paying for, you know, out of pocket that they can be getting free at their library. Um, we did a webinar not too long ago, um, so if you want to look on the Novelist website, you'll be able to find that. Um, it was on uh, Promoting your collection, that's one thing that you can do through those emails. We've also had um, a webinar on reaching people um, with all of those um, online databases that you might have, and it was called, I didn't know my library had that, because we hear that all day long at libraries, don't mm -hmm. we? Yeah, I mean, um, it's, the, it's, the be, it's the best name for a webinar ever, because it's absolutely <laughs> true. It's great. Well, and it was because I was explaining, you know, when we were discussing what to call the webinar, I said, you know, if I hear one more time, I didn't know mm -hmm. my library had that. And we were like, that's it. That's absolutely mm -hmm. it. So it, let I'm, people I'm know about it. those items. Yeah. yeah the, the, the advocacy corollary to that title is, if I had only known, I would have helped. You know, mm. and if I'd only, if I'd only known I would have helped is, is why we want to go out and talk to people where they are at. The, the spontaneous, yep. I'm going to wake up on a Tuesday morning and decide to come into the library after not having a card since I was 14 years old myself. I don't come into the library because I've been evangelized. Those are a few, a few number of humans, you know? So part of the evangelization process, part of that engagement process is to go where they are at. Um, it's the first point of contact, perhaps, that they've had an awfully long time with their libraries. And yet, yep. they care. If I'd only known, I would have helped. Yep. Kathy, I agree. Kathy, Kathy yeah, you had yeah. also, you were talking a little bit about businesses and letting them know about the resources that mm -hmm. the library had to help them. Um, one thing that we also sure. did with businesses was, you know, a business wants to draw traffic to their location. So we sort of partnered with businesses in that if we told people if they got a library card and they went to a particular business, the business might give them like a 5% discount or offer mm. them some kind of special um, product. And that mm -hmm. way you sort of help the business by driving traffic to them, but you also yep. um, had a little partnership there where they would mention in the business to go get a library card and vice versa. And that, that helped both parties there. So just another you way know, to look at it. Oh, yeah, Pam, you're just reminding me back when I was at the library, at Jacksonville Public Library, they... Um, we had a great relationship with our local symphony, and they did programs for adults, teens, kids, the whole gamut. And so we did this partnership where they would give people a discount on tickets to events when they showed their library card. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, promoting really popular shows that came into town, we started doing this with a local community theater. Um, things like that were really successful. Um, John, what was the most 
popular location for a sign up, library card sign up that, that you knew about? Uh, the ones that are done uh, on or near public transportation nodes are always really fascinating to me. Um, and you know, it could be the senior bus, sh you know, the, the senior shuttle. Um, you know, some people have asked what happens about the, uh, the, the assisted living facilities or, or senior care facilities. Those are great, of course. They have a lobby. They've got a, a lunch room or a dining room, I should say. But transportation nodes where people are uh, going to be sitting there doing nothing for a while um, are mm. really interesting. And those partnerships mm -hmm. and because the, li the public library, if it's not a, a node on the transportation network already, it's usually, hopefully, in proximity to it. And they're additive to each other in terms of the audiences. Um, yeah, those are the ones that I think are, are, are great. And that includes the ferry, you know? Yeah. Um, the, yeah. Other, the, the other ones that, um, I mean, I got to say, Kathy, just the, the basics on door to door. Even if you've got just a little part of your town that you can go to, it might just be a couple of blocks, the, the, the opportunity to go knock on somebody's door and have the door open, and there's a kid standing there. And you say, hey, can I speak to your, 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 your parent or guardian? I'm from the library. And they shout back to the rest of the house, hey, the librarian's here to talk to you, is a real mm -hmm. throw. Well, and I know that a lot of people on the chat, a couple of people on the chat, but you mentioned it um, to me previously, farmers markets. Um, you oh, have yeah. a great yeah, you have a great cross section of the community. People mm -hmm. know that they're going to go mm -hmm. from table to table or booth to booth, mm -hmm. so it's not mm -hmm. like you're sticking out like a sore thumb or you're being pushy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's a really great, friendly uh, place to be. It you know, is. getting people to I sign also, up for a library card. You, you accused me of scaring people earlier, so I'm going to do one more thing that might be a little scary. And that's that okay. I'll only I'll only let you go to the farmers market if you stand on the customer side of the table. If you stand on, on yep. the, the, the comfortable side of the table, I'm not going to let you do it. You have to be ah. out there with with your clip, clipboard in the stream of traffic. Otherwise, all you, all you are is a passive. Uh, well, you're just passive, you know. Yeah. Um, like yeah. what? Like what? And then my last tip, if I could, about if you're thinking about where could I go to do this, I can't picture it. John's crazy. I'm not going to go stand at the gas station pump, though some of you are, and I know you're loving this idea. Okay, my, my, my advice to you is go where the Girl Scouts have been. So they've got it going on. They know the terroir yep. already. The terrain is thoroughly mapped out by the Girl Scouts. Show up where they were a couple of months later. You're all set. I Kathy, love it. I love this it. Is Pam. Yeah. Um, yeah. John Pam. had mentioned areas where people are waiting, um, mm -hmm. bus stops and stuff. We did two spots, um, social services. You know, you go in there and you wait a long time to see somebody. We just went in the waiting room and talked to people about the library and also health clinics because that's where people are waiting. And most of them are more than willing to chat with us and, you know, let them know about library card services and stuff like that. I love this. These are all really great tips. I hate that we are almost completely out of time. I know that there was some questions about um, promoting to millennials via social. Um, Indian Prairie Public Library, go to their website, and I'm sure we can also provide this link um, in the notes. Um, they do a fantastic newsletter um, that is called Hashtag Lib Social, and it is all aimed at 20 to 30 year olds. You're going to see incredible programming ideas, um, very successful, and most of the people at that program say they found out through that newsletter from the library. So um, definitely. So I want to thank John Crasta from Every Library and Pam Jascott from Library Aware for giving us so many great ideas from this year's campaign. You'll be able you'll be able to get an email. You will get an email with a link to today's recording. So feel free to share that with others at your library. This concludes our webinar. Here is to a successful library card sign up month. Let us know how it goes. We'd love to see samples of what you're making. Thanks. <laughs>